Okay, I think everybody is doing Fourth of July stuff. <laughs> Pick like the worst time to do this. Oh well. All right, we'll get started. Um, so, uh, OL monitor is for SunQuest Labs, also HMS Labs. Um, it um, so with your current process is looking at the pending logs, uh, possibly printing them out, looking at the overdue log, possibly printing that out all the time. And uh, this is a way to automate that, to uh, quit wasting your time printing out those reports and looking over them. Even if you have a pending display already that's uh, on the screen, um, it's just not really, doesn't have the features that you need to optimize your workflow and just be able to have you have like a situational awareness of what tests are in the lab and how long they've been there, uh, you know, prioritize the stats. Um, you might have special situations uh, that you need to deal with and all of that stuff you can do with this application that runs on SunQuest systems and also H has been adapted for HMS systems. I'd certainly love to adapt it for other systems as well if the, anyone's interested. Okay. So how does it work? Uh, the program runs on Windows just like any other program. You can, a lot of uh, labs, well, I'll get to that part later. Uh, you need a Esker Smart Term VT terminal emulator which is used to communicate with SunQuest, and it has a very powerful macro language, which is needed to do all the pretty complex pulling of reports and just continuously doing that without having any user intervention or, you know, handling the errors. And, uh, you know, if it gets kicked off, it can log back on. The macro handles everything, so you don't have to mess with this. Um, this is a set it and forget it kind of system. Uh, the SunQuest VT interface is like a command line interface. If you're not familiar with that, if you're using the uh, SunQuest GUI right now, the VT interface is still there. You may not even know about it, but it exists and it's still there for, you know, the people, you can get a lot done. You know, people in IT, they love their command line and their PowerShell. And this is kind of like the same thing with SunQuest. It's great that they include this. Um, so let's go to the next slide here. Um, so here we got a little display uh, diagram of what I just said. <laughs> Should have been on that slide when I was doing all the talking. Okay, let's go to the next one. So here's what the VT interface looks like in smart term. And uh, you may be familiar with this. You may be pulling your overdue logs this way. This can all be automated. And not only that, not just to display it on the screen or automated to print it out, the OL, monitor application automates this and uh, you know, continuously updates it so you don't even have to mess with it. Um, so here are your requirements. You just need a Windows PC with Esker Smart Term. Uh, the program is compatible with Windows XP 7, 8, and even Windows 10. It does require a SunQuest logon and password. So, you know, what most administrators do is create a restricted logon that only has access to the overdue and pending logs. And uh, 
that's what they use to store the credentials. The techs aren't required to enter their credentials every time just to run the OA monitor. So this stuff gets stored in there. Encrypted, of course. Um, oh, and a little pro tip here. When you're in SunQuest and you're configuring the properties of your tests, you need to set the property of overdue days to zero. This will allow all of those tests to show up on the overdue log immediately instead of waiting a full day to be shown. So the overdue log is pretty handy because it's a little bit more organized than the pending log. The pending log is a little bit messy and so the overdue log is great for automation, but you can also do pending log with OL monitor. So it really doesn't matter. Okay, so here's a very professional looking rendition of a lab with an OL monitor display on the wall. Okay, next. Remember that you can run OL monitor on a workstation. So some labs, they want techs to be able to have their, their log display right there on the screen next to their work. So you can run this and set it to go in the background and then pull it up when you need to look at it. Here's some photos of OL monitor and mounted in a big wall display. And uh, over to the left, I think they could have optimized the font a little bit, but that's looking great. Um, so a lot of labs like to have like a stat board type situation here, but it, you can display anything on OL monitor, not just stats. The filters let you do whatever you want with it. You can do a combo. Okay, so a lot of techs have told me that they can't live without it. And uh, so I work in a laboratory and we use OM monitor and it is very, very helpful. And um, honestly, I don't know how we made it before we got it, but I'm biased. Uh, it's hands-free. Does it take you extra time to go click anything or pull a report or go pull stuff off the printer? All that time that you're spending doing those reports, especially when it's busy, you don't have time to pull those reports and that's when things get missed. Um, so this is a set it and forget it thing, a hands-free thing that you don't have to have to uh, spend your time and you're able to uh, intercept those missed tests and, and catch catch stuff before it goes outside of the turnaround time. You can uh, quickly check on your highest priority test if everything's uh, sorted and prioritized according to how you set it up. So one thing that's missing from those reports is the process time. They display the collect time or the um, or the receive time and then you just have to sit there and do kind of a little mental calculation for each and every test about how long it's been in the lab and uh you know that's great for your math skills but it's time consuming so this process time is next to every single test and we can use it to sort the list so that you know which tests are the oldest and uh which ones need attention. Um, experienced techs, after they get a little, if they after they get comfortable with the old monitor and get accustomed to seeing the times, they can instantly figure out kind of where the specimen is or, or it should be in the process. So, you know, if it's, uh, if it's just got in the lab, if it's chemistry, it's gonna be in the centrifuge for about 10 minutes. Um, but at the 15 minute mark, they're looking for the test, they know that it should be out of it by now. 
you know where to look for it, and that saves you some time right there. Um, this reduces surprises and lowers stress in the lab. Honestly, it, that actually happens. You can view important tasks from multiple departments and filter out a bunch of stuff. So I have a lot of labs that just throw everything on their overdue log and they use the advanced filtering to filter out everything they're not concerned with. And they're able to really fine tune exactly what they, what shows up on the display. Not just limited to, you know, one department or something, we can pull them all together and, and have them nice and sorted. Okay. So let's just go ahead and get on to how to use this. That was presentation stuff and go play around in here. All right, so here it is. And this has been running for a minute. We're in test mode here and we're looking at some test data. No PID in here. Um, we can see right away, we've got our list here and it's a lot easier to read than your average, you know, printout or whatever you're looking at. You can change the font here. You can change the colors. Um, you can do what you need to do to make this just look perfect and, uh, we can we can change the font around so that it fills up the screen and fills up this white space, depending on what kind of display you're using. I hope this looks good on the live thing. Oh yeah, it looks all right. Okay. And look at here, we got the uh, process time. So uh, we're not sorting on this spot right now, but we could sort on this. We've got blood cultures here that are, well, these are, these are made up tests. So these are unrealistic hours, but, uh, you can see how old all these tests are. We, we've only got one sort employed because I want to show you guys how to do these sorts and how to set things up. Uh, right now we've only, we're only sorting accord, according to status. We've got a received test here, our unreceived test down below. And they're broken up by a little line here. Now, uh, this list is several, a couple of pages long, but it's got an auto scroll feature. So if this is up on the big screen, the screen will automatically scroll down to the bottom of the list and then go back up again. So you get to see the whole list. So, um, so let's just get started and fix this list here because we've got a lot of stuff that we don't want to look at. Um, blood cultures, who cares? All right, let's get rid of those. Let me show you how quick you lean. You can do a filter to get rid of stuff that you don't want to see. You can just right click on that, filter out, test is culture blood. Give it a name. All right, boom. Now we got rid of all those blood cultures. Now we have our important test here. Got a lot of stats and some timed here. Let's see what else we can do. The uncollectives are down here at the bottom, but uh, I'm going to show you a little trick how to make your uncollectives a different color using these turnaround times. Set the turnaround time to one minute and everything's going to be at least one minute old. We can uh, select specific tests, but if you want to make a broad turnaround time here, you use the asterisk to include all tests. We make this apply to only uncollected tests. We change the text color to like purple. All right. Bam, there you go. 
So it's a lot easier to look at. You, if you're seeing uncollecteds, you're not really concerned with them. You can make them a kind of a dim color, but you still want to see them, you know. Uh, maybe you need to call the ICU and see what's going on. How come they haven't collected the CBC in the past five hours? So you might want to see uncollecteds. You can uh, filter, use filters to, to, to clean up the uncollected section. All right. So everybody wants to do something with stats. So let's do stat filter. So I've got one. One viewer, hi Nick. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's say that we want stats to generally be completed within 30 minutes. So let's say, uh, around time of 30 minutes and we're going to have it apply to all stats so we do all tests priorities so it needs to be our priority here is s stat up in whatever you want here if your lab uses stat for stat or you can also include you can include both if you have both s priorities and stat both on there for a collected test and then uh, you could go bright red for this boom all right so we have all these tests that are older than 30 minutes that are stats and they are red now um let's this is the demo, so it's been running for a bit. Let's go back to it. Get it going again. There we go. Okay, so now um, <clears throat> we can see that these other tests that are stats, they're only 10 minutes old, they're not red. Um, What's a cool thing to do is have a system, where, a scaling system, because it's great to let your text know that a test is overdue at 30 minutes, but if you want to avoid the test being, uh, you know, ever becoming overdue, if you want to be able to act on that before the situation happens, you should uh, have a warning when they still have time to act. So we can have sort of a scale down here. We can do uh, 20 minutes. Same thing, stats only. And let's make it a little bit of a dark red here color. This is kind of a warning. Let's go a little further. Let's give them a Another heads up at 15 minutes. So you see how fast you can set this stuff up. I mean, we get labs going, you know, in, in one afternoon. And what I've heard about other solutions, it's just you know, epic. Okay, here we go. We've got a, uh, we've got our dark red here. These are over 20 minutes old. So, you know, maybe we don't have time to do, oh, we can get that diff done at 25 minutes. Let's pause this. Uh, we can get that out the door. So we've had time to act. Uh, look at these over uh, 15 minutes old. We might be able to get this BMT, BMP done before it's overdue. So there you go. You, now you're giving your text the power to act on these tests before they become overdue and to get a heads up 
And that's really the goal, you know, that's why a real time system is always going to is going to be helpful instead of some sort of, you know, after the fact punitive system. So um, another thing we can do is we always want our stats to be a different color than, than our other tests. So let's do another one of these one minute things. Uh, let's make our stats be a, as soon as they hit the door, we know they need priority. Let's make them have a dark green, maybe. That looks so good. How about that one? So it's going to be kind of like a red light, green light, go kind of thing going here. There we go. We would do yellow, yellow, but it doesn't look good on this white background. So that's why I did orange. So we got a, we got green, green is good. Orange, okay. Guys, what are we doing? Uh, dark red, okay. Things are looking rough. Maybe we need to fix this in red. Okay, um, it's already overdue, but we could, uh, we could still get it done as quickly as possible and maybe avoid some angry phone calls. All right. Um, So anyway, uh, also, you know, the chemistry techs are going to know that these green tests, they're probably still in the centrifuge, so I don't even need to worry about them. They'll look at green and they'll be like, just ignore them. But when they see the orange test, then they'll be looking for their tubes and making sure they're on their instrument. And uh, my one viewer. Okay, um, specific stuff. All right, you can get specific with these turnaround times. You can have, uh, our cardiacs. We need to do something with the cardiacs uh, to let us know, to kind of streamline our workflow. workflow. So, uh, we want to get a heads up on cardiacs the minute they're out of the centrifuge at 10 minutes. So, uh, oops. Yeah, shouldn't have done that. Should have known better. Okay. What was this? Look what I did. I just broke the program. <laughs> oh, no. Only, only I could do this. This wouldn't happen in real life. Okay. I'll load it the next time. Okay. Uh, let's do this again. We're only going to do cards. Cardiacs. Maybe we want, we don't care about the stats. Let's just do all cardiacs because we're concerned with all cardiacs. So uh, collected 10 minutes, oh, oops. I wanted to do 10 minutes. I'll just, uh, I'll fix this. Oh, kitty, get away. All right, let's try it. Ten minutes. Cardiac. Collected. I'm gonna make them this sea green color. And actually, uh, you know, people can tell the difference between these slight color differences. So this is fine. Um, 
probably want to move that up. Okay. All right, so there you go. Um, our cardiacs get this uh, green color. Um, and they still need to. Okay. So, all right, so let's get on to filters. I'm putting everybody to sleep here. I got to get this thing going here. All right. So, um, so the texts are saying that they don't really want to see any uncollecteds. So uh, we can uh, we can just filter out the, all these uncollecteds. And this isn't the only way you can define filters. This is just like the super quick way. All right. So now we've got a nice list here. Um, and I haven't gotten into sorting. The sorting is going to make this look a lot better. We'll get into that here in a minute. Um, so filters here, we can get really complicated. I'm just going to give you a simple example. So, uh, they say they have an, an issue with the staff, uh, forgetting to get the second blood culture. So they want those uncollected to be filtered out except for blood cultures. All right. So we're going to... We're going to add some exceptions to these filters. And look at all these operators that we have here. We can do and or and less on our filters. Um, for comparison, we can do equals to. Um, kind of doing this backwards. But anyway, you can filter on anything. Priority, name, uh, process time all these fields, any field that appears on the log that you're using, you can filter on it. And uh, you have all these operators, you really, you can do absolutely anything with these filters. You can get very, just laser specific with what you want. Um, so we need to make an exception unless So we're filtering out all these culture bloods and we'll still do that. We'll say unless the uh, status is, and there's better ways we can do this, but just for this example, we're gonna throw in this exception. So you how you can quickly do that. And on here, we're gonna do an exception. So we don't wanna see any uncollecteds, we're excluding here, unless tests, Blood culture. All right, boom. So there you go. We got a couple of blood cultures here on Tyrion. And you can see that, you know, if this was couple hours old, maybe they could call the ER and say, hey, did you guys get the second blood on? Did y'all forget again? And stuff like that. And I've seen people, you know, these filters can be as long as you want. You can, I've, these filters can fill, I've seen people fill up this whole page and all the way down, getting super crazy with the filters. And, uh, and you don't have to do that, but you know, it certainly can. Let's see what else we got here.
Okay, um, sorting. We need to sort this list. It looks awful. Um, the best thing to sort on, I'm not going to sort on anything else aside from status, is process time. Oh, oh we just sort on process time. Simple sort. Done. Okay. All right, so now we can see that the oldest test up here, we got this wound culture that's been out for 120, 112 hours. Um, so now we know we all of our tests that really need attention, they're way up at the top. And all the ones that have just shown up in the lab, they're down here at the bottom. And that looks pretty good. We can go a little farther though. We can make this look really nice. Let's do a, um, what do we need here? We need a priority filter. There we go. So we want to preserve the existing sorts. We're going to use the grouping sort. And we want our stat priorities to be at the top. Um, we're going to have a space in between them, too, to further separate it. So. Uh, let's see how that works. I might need to rearrange those a little bit to get it perfect. Okay, so now you see all the stats are up at the top here. And then the, all of our timed and routine tests are down at the bottom. And uh, here's the old wound culture. That's fine. It's not a stat, so maybe we don't care about it that much. Now we've definitely got our tests sorted up here. And we can go a little farther here. We can even uh, decide that we want our ER stuff to further be prioritized. Let's see if that'll work. Probably definitely going to have to rearrange these to make it work right, but let's just see if it works right away. Yeah. That one broke it. Uh, location. Up. We may need to move status all the way down, probably. Oh, there we go. Um, so now you see all the ER tests. Are up at the top. There's stat priorities. And then we still have stats from other departments showing up in the second section here. And then we have our, uh, oh yeah, I, st I still needed to move that other sort up, but we'll fix that. Status needed to go down. There we go. But anyway, um, yeah. This really cleans up the list, prioritizes and organizes your work and your time. Um, what's another great feature? Condensing. You've got multiple lines, and this is how it appears on the report, you know? When it prints out, all these, you got the same patient, you know, five times on a page for each individual little test. Why can't we have them all on one line? Because that's how we, we think about them in our minds, you know? So let's uh, condense these tests. And uh, you can match on accession number CID. I'll show you what that means in a minute. But now we really got to clean up our list. Look at this. This guy had uh, four lines showing for his stuff. But now we've got them down to one line. If you hover over it, you can see the full name. 
So it condenses it down to three letters. You can you can expand it to four, make it just two, depending on what you got going on. So yeah, here's all the condensed test. You really can, so now you can increase the font size to make it really easier to view on a big old screen. And uh, okay, so some of these aren't gonna be matched. I'm trying to find one here. Uh, here we go, this guy. He, Rob Stark, his tests are not condensed in this situation because they have dis or an accession numbers. So yeah, you probably want to do that. Um, or you can, let's see if it works to not do that. You can just have it not try to match the accession number and just cram everybody all together. There we go. Look at that. Saving even more space. You can get, you can add, you can clean, you can add more filters now. So you can delete some of your filters and add a whole bunch of other tests now because you've got so much room and uh, you've got, you're combining multiple accessions to one line, you know, all to one patient. So one patient per line, you've, you've solved the overdue log just with that. Okay. Um, all these other features. Uh, we have the automated scroll here. I guess I don't have anything. Oh, guys, forgot. So you can do a pending log. Uh, there's a pending module, pending log module. So if you don't like using the overdue log, the pending log is great for phlebotomy because with the overdue log, you can't see future collections, only stuff that like. Uh, you know, it's 7.44 p.m. now, so you'll see all the collections that are due, you know, at 7.44 p.m., but not, uh, or before, but not in, not for the collections that are, you know, coming up at 7.50 p.m. or 8. So for that, you would need a pending log. And sometimes some other stuff shows up on the pending log, too, so you might want to check this out. But this is cool. Look, you can, uh, you can set the, uh, the start time, set it in the past, you know, however long you want. You know, most people choose like a whole day. You know, after it's after it's been pinning all day, I guess they don't care. Um, and then maybe only looking uh, a couple hours into the future. You don't care about anything else that far in advance, maybe just 60 minutes. So, pal, you got all that. Um, you can set up, you can use a couple of worksheets. We can add more worksheets later if, if your lab needs it. Just let me know. Um, and that's one of the other reports you can pull. You can also pro, pull HRP reports. Uh, orders not processed, that's going to be like your nurse collected specimens. So uh, maybe uh, urines, uh, MRSA swabs, stuff like that. Uh, that might not show up on your pending logs. You're gonna need to find them on the, the HRP report. And so you can throw that on there too. Oh yeah, the pending log and the overdue log and the HRP, we can combine all those port reports into one screen here if you like. Um, it pulls each report sequentially and combines the information. Uh, we have added the ADT error log. So that's very useful. Um, and even the order entry error log report can be thrown on here. And we got our configuration options here and our cutoff times. So, um, also if your lab wants to add other reports, uh, you just have to get a little information and we can add it to the lister. Um, so that's about it. Um, We've got a, covered a lot of stuff here and I hope I didn't bore everybody. But anyway, uh, just click on my profile and uh, the website is on there. So you can go to the website and uh, find out inform information about uh, OL Monitor and what it can do. And that is it. Thanks guys.